Hi everyone, it's Denise from Foursquare Micro Farm, and welcome to my breed study video on Bond sheep. This video is sponsored in part by Fairy Tales, and those are fibers from the Knit Fairy Stash. The study this time is on Bond sheep, and this is my actual first time with this particular fiber. Now, Bond sheep is a breed that was derived from Pepe Merinos and imported Lincoln Rams. And for the most part, they're mostly found in Southeast Australia and they've spread from there. Now, they're a tall and long bodied breed. They have open faces, clean on the bottom. Uh, they're very hardy. And when they selected for the body type and wool for the bond sheep was a big, bulky, long staple, bright wool. That's generally between 22 to 28 microns, uh, which is really nice. Good range. And the bond sheep can also survive um, in the wide range of rainy climates, um, somewhere between 14 to 45 inches of rainfall, which is a very hardy sheep. They also have a high fertility and a very nice um, lambing percentage. And they, it says that they tend to be like their parents, but they are, have longer, leaner bodies and they're faster growing. And they can weigh up to 330 pounds per round. So I can imagine you get quite a nice fleece off of a bond sheep. So this is the bond sheep in the raw. And it's really not quite raw because it's pretty obvious to me that Nancy either bought this scoured or scoured this prior to, well, prior to me getting it, of course. And I can really easily see how there is some merino in there. It doesn't quite look like Lincoln long wool to me. Uh, of course, there's several generations more removed. So I guess the key feature of the long wool is the the breed as far as body type and uh, maybe this being a little longer than some merinos are. I'm not really sure how to classify that one. But it's very nice fiber as far as handle. And I would expect it to be um, you know, next to skin, soft, basically. So that's going to be really cool. I have to point out, too, this is probably the first video, with well, exception of a little stuff there. That can, I don't have to apologize because my fingers are not covered in dye. <laughs> but I am dying. I just managed to get off this round. Okay, so anyway, I'm going to go ahead and put this away. And Nancy was such a dear, sweet, wonderful person that she stored the majority of her wash wool in these really cool pillowcases. And, and Nancy was basically old enough to be my mother. And so saying that is that these pillowcases are probably a lot of them from the 70s and they have the coolest patterns on them. And so it's just really neat. All right, and she labeled it. So I can't honestly tell you how much bond is here because somewhere in the move, the scale seems to have gone missing, and I was pretty sure I brought it with me, but I hadn't found it yet. But if I had to guess, um, I'd probably say about two, two and a half, three ounces, maybe. And I am going to, well, considering that this is the entirety of the sample, I'm going to go ahead and spin the entire sample up. Instead of doing my usual one-inch sample, or uh, one-ounce sample, I'm just going to go ahead and spin up whatever's there. So we got it back in the pillow. And I've got my little trusty fiber study sheet right here. And uh, it's already washed, so I couldn't put anything there. And I put the wash sample here. Um, I put, of course, the date I acquired it, the breed. And I'm really not sure what to call this color, so I'll probably just call it like a natural oatmeal. I'll continue to, to search and see if I can find a notation as to what color this might be. And then, uh, oh, you know what? If you can see, it seemed obvious to me that this, either during the 
scouring process or whatever, it was already, well, I guess I'll bring it back. It's not uh, in really tight lock form. Okay, so it's not really, really tight lock form. And maybe that was because of the washing. So I really think that I am just going to hand tease this, if I even do that, and I'm just going to spin it just like this. So there will be no prep for this at all. Just a little hand teasing, and I'm going to spin it just as it is. No drum card and none of that kind of stuff. So my prep over here is hand teased. Okay, and as I begin the spin, I'll add some notes down here in the bottom. So my journal is all prepped and prepared for my spin. And I'm going to go outside and enjoy the day with my dogs. And go ahead and spin up this fiber. Okay, so I'm officially outside. Uh, it's a really nice day. To be honest, I can't really tell you how long this is going to go. Um, because they're out here walking around. And hopefully they won't uh, interfere with the spinning. Okay, so at any rate, here I am with the ladybug. And I am just going to put the brake band or the... Um, flyer uh, uh, drive wheel band on the uh, you know I wish I could remember these ratios but it's going to be on the smallest setting uh, not for any particular reason that's just where I'm at right now and get this ready and let's see where my brake band is And just do the, the usual tie the knot. Realizing now that I wish I had brought out my spinner's control card. But whatever it is, I start this as going to be where it's going to be. So we'll just leave it there. And there goes a the dog. Okay, so. And this is where I'm at now, so. I'm spinning relatively thin. And I'm giving it a reasonable amount of twist. Ha! <laughs> I already had to stop once. Pepper's like eating something out of the ground. Dirt, maybe. My plants, I just planted. Hopefully not. Okay, so. trying to uh, slow down. <laughs> yeah, it's better. And this is a really nice staple lamp. And so it's handling really nice. Okay, let me spin this just a bit. You're watching the wheel turning. You're not really watching my hands drafted. Oops, sorry. Hopefully I can do that without jingling the camera too much. It's underneath my seat, which is how I'm getting this tight and close. This is a little short spot. I can tell from the way I'm drafting that I put my fingers closer together. There's a nice spot right there. Okay, so let me pull it out so you can get a look at it. And I swear these dogs are just hamming it up. They don't generally even bother me this much, but they are seriously crossing all over the place. Okay, so this looks like this is gonna be a heavy fingering. A little slubby in some places, but I, I didn't flick it, so if there's anything in there, I'm gonna get it, and it's just gonna be okay like that. All right, so basically that's how I'm gonna continue on. I don't know if you've ever seen those slow knitting uh, videos on uh, Netflix or wherever else they air 
this is not going to be it. You're not going to watch me spin slow spinning for a half an hour. <laughs> if you'd like to watch me spin for a half an hour, I could probably put on something colorful um, and you know, spin the rainbow or something like that. But at any rate, I'm going to go ahead and spin this up and I will show you the plying process and then I'll take you through the washing. Uh, and then we'll, we'll see how it looks from there. But I, I think I'm going to be very pleased with the way this spins. With, you know, the way it's drafting is very smooth. The staple length is great. All right, see you in a little bit. At the end now, and uh, I totally forgot about showing you plying, but I'm pretty sure you've seen me ply before. And um, here I am. I'm done with the bond. Finished my little scenario on it. Uh, sorry about the cross outs. I don't know, I was riding Cheviot because my mind was still stuck on the Gulf Coast native, which I'll do next. And the Bond is a Merino Lincoln cross developed from Merino Lincolns. And so you get the best of both worlds here. I really enjoyed spinning it. It was nice and springy and soft, had a good handle. Here's the finished um, product. I kind of forgot about um, showing you the plying, but well, you've seen me ply plenty of times, so just jump right into here. This is the finished bond to ply. I really enjoyed spinning it. Uh, bond is a breed developed from Merinos and Lincoln, and you get the best of both worlds here. It was very springy, but it had a better handle, a smoother handle than Merino does. Uh, and the crimp is spaced further apart, as you would imagine, being crossed with a long wool. And as you can see from the reflection, it does have a nice shine to it, like a long wool would. Um, and it's just gorgeous. It was really nice. Look at that. That's really pretty. So that's basically, that's the end of my bond study. But at any rate, we've got another breed study under our belt. Uh, this, I think you would enjoy this one. Uh, if you're looking for something that's in between the long wool and merino, you want something a little softer. You know what? I want to say it probably felt a lot like Finn. And Finn is one of my favorite long wools to work with because... You get the long wool, you get the jewel tone when you dye, you get the cute little curlies, but it's a softer long wool than a lot of the other ones are, like the lesser long wool, which is also one of my favorites. It's Finn can be more next to the skin. and I, So I feel the same way about the bond. This would be more next to the skin than Lincoln would be, and it would still have that same uh, jewel tone shiny Ness of the Lincoln and not quite as much curl as Lincoln would be but still it's a really nice crimp but not as deeply crimped as Merino and much more silky softer handle and flow than Merino does all right everybody that's the end of the bond study thank you for watching I hope uh, there was something of interest in this video and uh, click the like button subscribe if you haven't and as always if you have any questions uh, or if you want me to do a video specific to something, uh, just let me know.